Welcome to Thrones and Scones. It's your weekday morning podcast where we chitty chitty chang bang talk about Game of Thrones over briggity briggity breakfast. Today, tackling season five, episode seven, The Gift, alongside white chocolate raspberry scones. And of course, the three amigos, the uh, t- terrible trio, the, the the boys, your favorite, your favorite daddies it's tony hans and uh and jeremy hi guys i think we're gonna need to come up with better nicknames than any of those <laughs> like those i thought that they were great so oh, you have you have wounded me deep daddy and i do want to bring up i do want to bring up the fact that no one to this day has called me bone dragon <laughs> even though i explicitly asked you to <laughs> that's not true all you said was it would be a cool nickname yeah, I and you'd... I just I think that Jeremy and I both like had a look. We shared it for a brief moment, and we understood that, hey, we're gonna reserve this nickname for Hans once he earns it with some sort of cool deed. Yeah, okay. exactly. And, like tattoo would be That's a cool fair. way yeah, yeah, yeah. of going down with that. A, a neck tat. Yeah, <laughs> yes. of course. A sweet, getting, a sweet, getting like, your silver eyeballs ring. pierced. <laughs> all right, all right. Like left eye will be bone, right eye dragon. Yes. When, yes. When of you bleep when you blink it says fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the gift, guys. Uh we got a lot of people and by a lot of people I mean a couple probably. No one actually said anything but I'm sure that they were confused in their heads saying that oh hey you guys uh Oh, I don't know if you guys were were totally 50-50 yesterday on the old thrones and the old scones. And it's what we've been telling you from day one. We have trouble keeping the uh, scones to their relegated time slot. You know, it's just so easy. And I, I feel like most episodes we over talk with the pastries. So let's. I'm just going to get right out in front of any of the hate bullets. Jump into Game of Thrones. Would you guys like a little plot action? Yeah, hit me with Lay the it plot, on me. please. I got. I got it here for you. Would you like it in any sort of particular fashion? Yeah. I'll let. You, uh, do you want another multiple choice? Go back to that. If you've still got choices to give, sure. Uh, Jar Jar Binks, I believe, has not been selected for A. <laughs> Uh, you're, you're I'll, still correct. I'll let you be just random unnamed prequel droid. <laughs> oh, like the Roger Roger guy? Sure. Prequel okay. droid. Uh, okay. Or... Bob Parker again. <laughs> here, here, I know where you're going with this, with this third option, and I will do option number three. <clears throat> hey! <laughs> Little Annie! <laughs> it is you! <laughs> <laughs> John prepares uh, for conflict. <laughs> no, that's, 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 lots of Asian inspiration for the prequel voices, aren't there? Uh, <laughs> Sansa tries to talk to Theon. <laughs> I just so happen to have a chance, Q. <laughs> Brienne uh, waits uh, for a sign. Stannis remains stubborn. Red the boy, blue his mother. Jamie attempts to reconnect with family. And of course, just in case you forgot, because lots of people forget this, but Republic credits are no good out here. I need something more real. Ugh, that's what happens here. That was pretty solid. Season five. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. It was good. Um, I always like. I always. Like a good Watto. You want a Watto? Te Uh Wonga. <clears throat> Little Annie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you guys feel like this episode was a gift? We've been a, It's been a slow season. How did you think? I'm not going to say that everything happened, but a couple things happened. Yeah, I think, uh. we, I think we picked it up a little bit. What do you guys, just, just let me throw this out there. What do you guys <clears throat> think of this it. season so far? I so in my head, it's not that bad. But like, I don't. So I'm not beyond this episode right now, and I'm just wondering if it gets any better. Because if it doesn't, in a major way, fast, this has to be the worst season. That's what I was thinking too. And what's funny is, as I'm watching it, it doesn't. I haven't even really noticed. It's only when we go back to review the episodes that I'm like, oh, oh shit, yeah. nothing really happened. 
and they're fine. And I know, like, this is probably just this massive thing of setup because season six and to an even greater extent, season seven is just a mess of stuff. Like they just throw plot point after plot point, battle after battle. Like it's, it's chock full. So I guess this is just the setup of that. And yeah, they're doing it. Okay. They're doing the exposition in a way. Like I don't feel during the episode, like most of them particularly drag on, but then, yeah, you're just like, well, okay. Where did that get me? (laughs) Right. You know, and I feel like we've talked about this often when we're going over our reviews that we like talking about, like, these small Dicks. events. That and, well, scrotums probably more. A little ball forward. Um, probably more. So, you know, the thing about these episodes, I don't think they're initially bad. They just are a lot of story and not, like, these ta-da moments. So, like, when yeah. you're going and going back to talk about them, you're like... Well, yeah, a lot happened, but nothing that's like stands out. Yeah, it's not bad story. Fe- yeah, no, 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 it's not. And they all just feel like I think my problem is they feel like they're setting something up, and then in the ep- next episode, it just feels like it's setting something up. Yeah, exactly. And it just never happens. We do get a couple. I mean, there are at least some punches thrown in this episode. Uh, Sam gets uh, attacked and wrecked. By some unnamed Night's Watch rapists. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, they try to go after Gilly, too. Yeah. I guess that's who they're it's... going after when Sam tries to Protect stick them. up for her. But... Just gets bitch slapped yeah. like multiple times across the face. It was rough. It was a rough scene. It was rough. Go save the day just in time. And then uh, Sam survives, at least for now. And he gets to make... Semi careful love to to Gilly and his noises <laughs> are everything that I live for. <laughs> oh my! Oh my! <laughs> egg, egg. My question is: If you just got the shit beat out of you, would you want to be having sex for the first time? I don't know. Like, well, this is a little <laughs> swollen right now. <laughs> well, oh you got to think. I mean, here, just put yourself in his shoes. All right, I'm sure you've been here before. Your best friend goes off to uh, find your mortal enemy so that your immortal enemy doesn't destroy all of you. Your other best friend, who's a hundred-year-old man, just died. Your illegal girlfriend almost got raped, and you just got the shit kicked out of you. I mean, like, how are you not going to bone? It is a mood center. (laughs) And my, my subtle little joke there, I don't know if you picked up on it, I'm... Not, I'm almost confident that the sounds Eamon Targaryen made on his deathbed were very similar <laughs> to Sam's sex noises. <laughs> what are you implying? We just, uh, Gil- are you saying that when Gilly was saying, go to bed, Sam, I'll watch him? <laughs> or, or just Game of Thrones always hitting that duality. <laughs> <laughs> Life is about balance. Oh. <laughs> quality uh insight there i didn't even pick up on that uh also up in the north here uh as we talked about yesterday theon gets his opportunity to help sansa and then does not very weirdly yeah wouldn't have been hard for him to do no one would have known i get that he's a broken broken man but don't make me think that he's not for a couple minutes right it's just it's again, if he was that broken, he would just be that broken. And it seems I like think. it seems cruel to Sansa, which doesn't make sense for his character. I get he's loyal, but it's yeah. like, why go why go out of your way to seem that you're improving and helping someone to bat stab one when when you're constantly telling Sansa, Hey, no, no, just listen and everything will be okay. Like he won't hurt you unless you don't do what he wants. Yeah, Theon's know. not the only one getting the shaft with the writing there because Sansa also it's totally broken in this episode like you feel for her so hard mm-hmm. she is just a, a wreck she is gone from discovering her confidence to being absolutely hopeless in you know the turn of a couple episodes here and then 10 minutes later she's like goading Ramsay <laughs> saying like well if, if uh, you know if you have a little brother He'll always have the better claim because you're a bastard. Like, just blatantly mm. goading him there. Uh, just, 
is rough. And then it, of course, gets us to have to look at another flayed body. I know, the old woman. Too bad. <laughs> and then we go in, in with Stannis and talking with Davos about, like, the plan and how, like, they're having... I mean, the winter is really setting in for them. We know they're low on supplies. They were low on supplies when they were up at the wall. Um, and then we just get the whole conversation about uh, Melisandre and what's going to be for bad or for winning and, like, sacrificing Shireen and just... Yeah. Yeah. But Tommen... Or, not Tommen. Stannis is, uh, is against it. I said Tommen because I'm still shipping Tommen <laughs> and Shireen, hoping that one day we'll get that beautiful uh, match made in heaven. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe they'll just switch Stannis' actor to play Tommen in the next season. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And then all will be well with the Do world. you yeah. think... Do you think we'll have anything... I don't can't remember of anyone that didn't sign on or... For the season, uh, season yeah. eight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... Wouldn't that be great if and if you could see someone replace who who do you want who do you want to see flipped? I'm personally voting for John. Uh, Jora with a corpse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that's a good. Uh, again, I mean, I'm, we... I'm really happy with the casting of this show overall. Me too. Do we have any changes uh, in seven from six to seven? I don't think so. I was trying to remember. Trying oh to remember. no, you know what? I would change. Uh, it has nothing to do with the actor's portrayal because I think he does a good job. Of, uh, I just think that the way they decided to go with this character is stupid. So if I could change the actor and thus change the way they portray the character, I'd pick a Euron Greyjoy. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Mm. Is but, he the brother you were saying? Or wait, no, you were saying his uncle went crazy. Yeah, but that is his uncle. That's his uncle. That is. is and he, yeah. so he's just different than he was in the books? Yeah, well, in the books, Theon has three uncles... One of whom's like a priest, and then the other two, Victarion is like this naval commander. Euron is like this exile, and they rolled Victarion and Euron into one character for gotcha. the show. It do, and it does. It just. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah. It's a. It's a weird character, who is like. You remember that um, in the beginning when we met with uh, the brothers, where they're talking about the guy who, when Dario went and brought the heads to her oh yeah like he reminds me of one of those of that of that like that perv the entire time yeah that's like, exactly the vibe you get from that's him. the exact vibe you get and that's not at all him like so and he's wearing like this pop punk eyeliner like yeah, tight leather i know we don't see this dude for like a solid season but yeah, trust i feel us, like he's, he's also in the uh what was the queen movie the bohemian rhapsody i feel like they're, they're they share that moment oh i didn't see that movie that's it's a good movie by the way i you. have heard it's really good. Good music, good uh, movie. Anyway. Speaking of good music, we get another Game of Thrones song. This one is my favorite. And maybe it's just because Jerome Flynn's voice is surprisingly quite good. Uh, we get to hear a little portrayal of uh, a lovely little tune called The Dornishman's Wife. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is uh, just, just a lovely tale about a man being killed. But who cares? Because he got to taste the other man's wife. <laughs> <laughs> And then our juggly moment for the episode, <gasps> perhaps one of the hottest scenes in ever, this show, ever. full stop. Ever. <laughs> ever. It, I wasn't watching it with anybody, but like my cat was in the room, <laughs> I was uncomfortable. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> we get to see, I don't even know her name. I know the other two's names, Nim and Obara. I don't know the little one's name. Oh, I have no idea what her name so, is. So no clue what it is, but it's one of the sand snakes. Um, is it Tyrene? And I've never Ty, 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 Tyrene. Perhaps it very well could be. <laughs> Ty, uh, let's say Ty that it is. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's say that it's Tyrese. Yeah. And uh, I never understood this, uh, this scene until this time watching it. When I was like, oh, okay, Sh this is just such convenient timing that like the poison just so happens to kick in. Like this is so. Like has she been counting down in her head? Yeah, exactly. And no, now That's now I'm watching it and I'm going. I'm going like, oh no, she's getting, <laughs> she's getting him aroused so that his blood gets pumping, so that then the poison hits. And I'm like, oh shit, that that's okay. yeah, that but makes sense. we see the poison work so much quicker in the future as well. Do we? Yeah, wait, because with uh, Ilaria when she spoilers when she has it <laughs> on her spoilers. lips. 
Yeah, don't 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 say no, anymore. I'm spo- but I'm saying, but like when she comes back, <laughs> this is where we draw the line. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love them being called no, out for this. Spoil. We spoil a lot of fucking shit. I think yeah. we talked but about. Will, she, we've already she talked about the ending she's of the literally series. Like, in the same scene, she starts wiping blood from her nose. But they are beyond. I mean, they're at least far enough to where they don't turn back. So we don't know actually how far out to sea they are. Oh. I just when feel like it's happens. really, uh, of course, you know, time is so well done in this show. So <laughs> true. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, but okay, don't let's know. get back to the hot scene. That's fucking hot. Do that. It's just it's a hot. Oh, scene. my God. The whole prison bar thing. And like, who's the most beautiful girl in the world? It's seductive and fucking very evil. Good. God, it's good. It's so good. It's, it's very good. Um, yes. It wasn't my favorite part of the episode, though. Uh, again, not a not a sight that is going to happen often. So relishing in it while it happens. Jor Mormont had my favorite moment of this episode in the supreme amount of ass that he was kicking, uh, <laughs> just coming out, throwing haymakers and knocking people out with helmets, and it was great. Yeah, that was my favorite part too. I don't know what's wrong uh, with you. That was not my. That let's oh. go back to Dorn. <laughs> Although, Dorn is so bad in the future. Dorn is fantastic right now. Let's live this dream. Although, quick runner up, just right under there, same moment, right as Jora leaves to go uh, f some people up out in the fighting pits. I just love that that huge guy with his giant sword frees Tyrion, and yeah. then subsequently just gives this sweet head nod. <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought. That that dude is supposed to be a nod to Strong Belwas in the books. Oh, okay. And I can't confirm that or anything. And I think that dude is actually bald. Um, but can't tell you just sure. he's he's kind of this fun character, Hans, in the books. Yeah. Who travels with Barristan Selmy before he meets up with Daenerys. Okay. And then is subsequently around Daenerys. And it's this super big guy. Um, and he's he doesn't wear a shirt. He's got a sword that looks like that. And he, he's got all these cuts on his body because every time he fights a man, he lets him cut him once and then he kills him. That's his thing. And he's just this big, goofy oaf. And uh, he's, he's really funny. And I have no idea why they didn't include him in the, in the show. It's a bit of a bummer. You know who else likes to let someone cut him one time before he kills him? Drogo, right? Uh, I mean, we know how that plays out. It's, it worked out very, very well for him. Yeah. Uh, yeah he likes to there. step into the blade a little bit to get a little deeper. Yeah. Uh, on our way to King's Landing here, I have a, a few notes, a few passive-aggressive questions. Uh, Olena walks in and says, where can I find the High Sparrow? But she was in the hearing. She knows what he looks like, and she should know that she's talking to him. Um, okay, fine. Whatever. Tommen gets a little antsy, makes all these big proclamations, and essentially says that he has the power to do something, and then just sits down and continues eating dinner. <laughs> it's just like do something if you actually are that upset and want to like you're obviously not being calmed by reason so what is mm-hmm. preventing you from moving i don't know i think you can actually explain away that one but for the sake of nitpicking i'm going to move on and then also cersei showing up in marjorie's cell offering her soup and subtly saying that it's leftovers i like that little shade why would marjorie not throw the soup at cersei like, she's blind with rage at her, and she throws it against the wall. Like, why would you not throw it at Cersei? Of course you would. Yeah. You'd do anything. You'd throw all kinds of shit at that bitch. Yeah, you'd throw your own poop. Yeah. Didn't do that. And then, a runner-up for my favorite moment, and uh, just because I really think that the more I watch it right now, I think that this Sparrow storyline for me, has the connotation it does because it's kind of in the same vein as that Renly thing where now that we know the payoff, everything leading up to it just seems stupid. Um, Because I don't remember hating it the first time I watched it, especially with this when we see Cersei finally get what's coming to her and like this such obvious turn. I remember it being very satisfying and I didn't necessarily feel that way watching it this time. But I think that this might just be one of those things that doesn't, really stand up to a second viewing uh, as well for me i 100 percent agree the high sparrow stuff i don't remember hating this i remember thinking it was an interesting story 
And now when I watch it, I am, like, I could easily fast forward and not give a fuck. Yeah. Well, just because, and not to, again, go far too far ahead. It just all is snuffed out so quickly that it just feels like a waste of my time. It feels like a giant movement now. And you think, how is this going to affect the game? Yeah. And then you realize that, I mean, okay, we could argue it affects the game a little, but um, it just doesn't feel to have that momentum in the way that it's being done now. So, uh, yeah, un- unfortunately, Bernie Sanders and his takeover of the Church of Westeros isn't uh, <laughs> isn't isn't getting my vote for the best moment of uh, of the season here. But uh, Hans, what were your highlights of the episode? Uh, Low lights? Any yeah. lights? Really? So my my favorite part, as I mentioned, was definitely the fighting pits with Jorah. Oh yeah, uh, I did think the part oh, yeah. where the guy, oh, even though I don't yeah. understand why that giant guy frees Tyrion, I did like it. I thought it was funny. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, I do. I, I mean, I still thought it was saddest just because Cersei's pissing me off with this <laughs> whole thing, and it it may it's even dumber rewatching it. All the stuff she's doing, it did. It still was satisfying to me when she, at the end, ended up being captured uh, by the High Sparrow. But I guess my question is like, what? So the High Sparrow talks about how he's so obviously he's. Uh, you know, supposed to be this man who puts aside all his, I don't know, he's supposed to be like altruistic and all this stuff and and all for the gods and, you know, doesn't want anything and only wants what's right religiously. But he played Cersei, right? Like he very much manipulated her in a way where he knew this the whole time. He had to have because, I mean... Everyone knows it. (laughs) Yeah, everyone knows it and... He's got the inside man that ho- told him firsthand what he did with Cersei, and he must have admitted that before they took him in to be there, like you know, uh, militant or whatever. Now I'm not. I'm wondering if if that's not true. And I never picked up on this earlier. But when Littlefinger's having his conversation with Elena, he says, "I have the same gift for you that I had for Cersei, a young man with a story to tell." So I'm wondering if Lancel's story was not yet told Mm, in a way that mentions Cersei like I'm sure obviously he atoned for for you know his end of it but maybe there were no names or anything sure yeah and that's a good point I guess in my mind I was just I just can't imagine if 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 Lancel was doing all this and Mm. giving up all this stuff I guess I don't know why he would be holding anything back at that point yeah The only thing, I, I mean, again, it goes beyond the picture that they're painting where he's at least a little politically motivated, but it's it's very much, I think, he's got to wait until he's in that position, which they, you know, seemingly are right now, where, you know, a, a royal decree can't touch them because they have established this immense presence of strength uh, within the city. They've been armed by the crown and you know, now they're going rogue. And so he kind of had to play the game to get to that point. But now shit, you know, but I still don't, I agree with you. I don't think they made him out to necessarily seem like that level of a mastermind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's all pretty seedy stuff. I mean, is that okay with the gods? (laughs) Like, I mean, he's, (laughs) I mean, he's technically like, you know, for lack of better words, lying and, and kind of skeeving and all this stuff. And he seems like he's really trying to, the way he's made out is that he's trying to work against all that and he's straight up just doing it. So I don't know. <laughs> or at least it seems like he's doing it. I guess like you're saying, maybe that's not the case. Cause when, and maybe I got this backwards, but when, when I, when Lord Baelish said that, I thought he was talking about his insert naked man here guy, Oliver. Right. I didn't realize he could have been talking about Lance. All but... Oh yeah. Cause well, cause Oliver was the one who, who? testified against Loris. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. And I kind of thought that that's who he meant because that would make more sense to me because I don't know how well Lancel even knows Lord Baelish. Well, okay, wait. But what would Oliver even have to say about Cersei? Yeah. Probably nothing. I guess I just, I don't know. But because you're right, what would Lancel have? And actually, they have that moment in the streets when Littlefinger gets back into town. They have a confrontation. Like, <laughs> they're not, huh? Yeah, now I'm perplexed. I don't know. Jeremy, take some of this confusion away. Tell me about a scone. I guess land. Oh, uh, wait, wait. No, no. Sh- I want to hear about this scone. Well, all right, go so, ahead. All right, no, 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 Hans. No, 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 but no, the no, scone Hans. was. No, 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 Hans. <laughs> no, I don't have anything. It, it's a white chocolate <laughs> raspberry scone. 
and it's delicious, and everyone should eat it. And I got it from oh, from uh, Winnin's Chocolate. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have that place, so I can't. I don't really want to yeah, hear any more about it what? because I just yeah. feel bad I at feel this like, point. I feel like we're gonna just keep talking. So, but that matter. was uh, that was the gift. And uh, we hope that it felt like a fun little present for you. We'll be back tomorrow with another little nugget in the form of Season 5, Episode 8, with more scones and more nonsensical chitter-chatter. Until then, thronesandscones.com. You already know you can check out all our stuff up there. And are you down with G-O-T? Yeah, you know me. It was particularly ballsy there. It's a good bass. <laughs> it was, yeah. A little deep. Yeah, I, got in, I got a little excited a little rumbling. There. So, Jeremy, yesterday, this has been yeah. bothering me for <laughs> what has now been a day, apparently. <laughs> 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 but, but. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. You mentioned that you had, uh, where, where did you have this peanut butter and jelly sandwich that you were at some, this was your first course at some tasting or something? Yeah. So, at the uh, uh, Corner Kitchen. Okay. It just seems like an odd choice for like a fancy meal still. No. So it was, they were like, <laughs> I, I want to say like the size of like, like a small cookie. So maybe like a, what's a, what's a, what's the small orange called? Like a clementine? Like a clementine. Like about that big. And it was like a stack and it was like a piece of whatever sourdough bread. And then it was the peanut butter, the cheese, and then the the jelly. It was really good. <laughs> I just love the idea of this of this like fancy, you know, six, five, seven course meal or whatever containing this peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> well, un, I mean, it's un, like, un mademoiselle is your a peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they make they made their own peanut butter. They did the brie. I mean, it was it was different. I mean, <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's what was bothering you, man. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I was, uh, I'm a little bummed with the conclusion of this episode, you guys, because for once I was finally ahead on my Game of Thrones watching. I had had this episode watched for a while now, and uh, I was like, all right, just <laughs> keep on the train. Keep ahead, and that way I won't fall behind and have to binge it. And then uh, a couple days back, when I got to this episode, I had watched like three in a row. I was off work, and so I, I went and did some other stuff, and I was like, I just don't, I'm a little Game of Thrones out. I want to check out something else. And I've been meaning to stop by Netflix and uh, keep up. that Umbrella Academy. I have not watched You guys watched, watched that. this yet? I haven't watched, watched it. Suffice it to say, I have not watched any more Game of Thrones in the past few days. Holy shit, this show is good. Really? It is, uh, yeah, it's, so it's got some X-Men-y vibes a little bit. It's actually written by uh, Gerard Way, who was the singer for My Chemical Romance. I heard that. Weird. Um, That's weird. But yeah, yeah. I guess the original comic was written by him and somebody else. And so then, yeah, it's been adapted for this Netflix show. But it's got like, I don't really know how to explain it. It's like a little, like one part X-Men, one part like Like Watchmen. It's got a little bit of hero vibe. I get a lot of like Daredevil from it as well. Mm. Um, and it's just like the story is super good. The characters are, at first, they don't really seem good. So I'm confused why I'm drawn to them so much. But they, they're they done pretty well. Um, and it's just a really good show. Is it violent? It's a, it's a bit violent. Not like overtly so mm. or anything. It like feels proper for what it is. Um, just coming in like little bursts, uh, bursts, but it's been so long since like, I just watched it for the first time the other day. I watched like two, three episodes and, uh, <laughs> it was a school night. I had to go to work the next morning and I was like, all right, I got to go to bed. And uh, I sat there for like 15 seconds, just considering hitting play instead. Cause it was like, I just want, and it wasn't even like a cliffhanger episode. It was like, I just want to keep going. Like, nice. It's a really good show. I would recommend. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. I uh, we we were kind of intrigued by the trailer. It did look kind of cool. Um, the other thing, going a completely different direction, uh, have you guys seen this the trailer for Paddleton, Ray Romano's latest movie? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, well, we shouldn't be laughing because it's about cancer, you dicks. <laughs> oh, oh, oh but, uh, that's rough. But anyway, it looks pretty good. Hmm. 
Uh, I did just because no one's going to get where this train of thought. When you started to speak, I thought you were going to say Paddington 3 because, of <laughs> course, know, our naturally. fascination with – with Paddington 2 a number of episodes back. Then made me think about the time I told you guys that like Smurfs 2 owns a very specific section of this town. <laughs> like all these billboards are still up and it's very odd. Well, like a week ago, it was in the low 50s. And I was like, oh. So I went and uh, ran outside and one of the billboards has been like, I don't think professionally taken down because there were still strips and scraps of it. But like they're starting to wash the Smurfs 2 away <laughs> from... Uh, from the city, and soon it will just be another forgotten memory. <laughs> <laughs> we just uh, uh, finished watching Sex Education on Netflix. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, Holy that was crap, good. that is a good show. I loved that. I watched that show in two days. That show is very yeah, good. Yeah, so Emily and I, and that's, that's when you said the whole 15 second thing, Emily and I hit that moment like multiple times on like a Sunday night when we finished it. She's like, we gotta go to bed. And I'm like, <laughs> just just like one more episode and then after that we're like oh my god so good let's watch another one and i'm like fuck we're mm-hmm. screwed tomorrow did you guys it's, so yeah i think i think john and i binged that in like a day it was uh but a good episode or good series did you guys watch uh, ever watch uh altered carbon on netflix no that's still uh, that's still that's on my still list like to on watch my list. yeah oh, it's it's solid it's very good second half of the show a little weaker than the first half but still overall fantastic hmm that's good gotta check that out i finally watched um the other day i've been meaning to do it forever now uh bandersnatch oh yeah i haven't i haven't done i guess i haven't done that one yet i haven't done that this is the this is the black mirror movie that is a choose your own adventure Mm -hmm. um it was very different than i expected it to be it went on a little bit longer than i expected to i would i would a lot two hours if you're gonna watch it yeah i Mm. i went to go check it out one day and i saw the runtime was like an hour and 45 minutes or something and i just yeah. was like i i'm never gonna have time for that it is a cool thing though in that i thought like i the way that it was going through and the loops that it was putting me in i felt like i pretty much saw everything mm-hmm. um and then i was talking to somebody at work and they had i had like two three scenes that they did not get and they had a scene that i never saw as well so it's a it's an expansive movie, but it was like it's one of these like meta things that really gets you thinking. It's a good story. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're it's a very Black Mirror thing. So if you're not into it, you probably wouldn't care for it. But the choose your own thing is a cool aspect to it. Yeah, when you say Black I've, Mirror. I mean, like the movie? No, the show Black. Mirror. The show Black Mirror. Oh, I don't on know Netflix, why the series second second best show on television right now. Is it? I really? don't know, no. man. The black, it just doesn't. I feel like there's some episodes of Black Mirror that I thought were very good. There's some that I think are just garbage. And then there's, <laughs> and, but none of them have even come close to like, like I would take, I would take some of the, the, I would take like a Twilight Zone, pretty much any Twilight Zone episode over the Black Mirror episodes. They just really? seem to, they just seem to run a little long for me. Like they could, they, are, yeah, they could accomplish what they're going for much quicker in my have opinion. Have you watched the, uh, I forget what it's called. It's like something about dancing or the DJ. <laughs> I know it's very specific, <laughs> but but the the one about like the kid um and the uh like internet hackers no i think it's in season 2 that is my favorite episode oh really it's a, it's a fucking ride the internet hackers wait that's not the video game one is it no i don't like the video game one yeah i uh yeah and i really i should preface with the point or with the fact that i only watch the ones that look like they're not suspenseful or scary because jenna won't, oh yeah jenna won't watch those <laughs> so i'm probably like i'm really just tailoring my my watching experience to the boring ones i'm assuming but. fair enough did you watch the one that won all the awards the uh the uh san junipero uh that's the one about the old people that go to the yeah place and be young or something yeah that one was good yeah yeah i thought that was decent but jeremy you've never seen it before Mm-mm. no any so, of it oh no it sounds like i have to watch it it's a really really good uh is it it's on a really good is series it netflix or netflix. Netflix. Okay. yeah it was originally i was it bbc maybe or something for the first season but then netflix picked it up and now it's a netflix it, series yeah i i guess my I, biggest complaint with them is so far of the ones i've seen they're absolutely 25 
maybe 30 minute episodes in a 50 minute 60 minute form and that's my biggest grade. that bothers me when yeah. i feel shows that way for that. some of them i i do uh i love them i love that show though i will say <laughs> like yeah i just i think it's a great show um i will say my biggest problem with it is the first episode is kind of one of the trash ones in my opinion mm. so either give it two episodes or just skip the first one you don't need it they're not connected None of the episodes are connected. So was that like a pi- um, was that like the pilot and it was shit? Well, it's not even shit. It's it's an okay story, but like if you're watching it thinking that this is what the show's going to be like, it's wrong. Mm. And it's That's weird. It's just it's an odd little way to to open up. The I, story is basically it's one of the, the stories that's been told before, um but like it's one of those like oh, would a position of a power do something giving up that position of power? publicly for somebody's safety or for just any other thing like it's uh it's a catch-22 pretty standard story Mm -hmm. um just done in an odd way it's not bad but it's it's weird it's real weird um yeah what a weird choice for our first episode very bold but anyway (laughs) very uh, bold i will say to get a little spoilery that freaking episode where you can get like muted or whatever it's called terrifying Holy shit <laughs> are you talking about the one the because there's two that have a similar thing are you talking about the john ham one i'm talking about the one where the guy has the daughter or he well i don't want to spoiler but yeah he the okay one where the so, girl just like automatically like puts him right. on block or whatever right right and holy cat what can you imagine what that would do to your psyche oh my god Ugh. Yeah, the it's show terrible. does do some cool stuff. I'm not saying it's bad. I've enjoyed some of the ones I've watched. I just they they go on too long. Yeah, much like this podcast. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>